tell you something I don't understand. In the last episode, I asked you guys whether we accept Danny through his jealousy streak, dodgy past, protectiveness, and almost, how can I put this nicely? He wanted to show us how much of a man he was. He wanted to, you know, really show us how much of a man he was. And you guys still want to accept him. I don't know what I was expecting. Well, this, really. But I don't know what I was expecting, but it's happened. Fine. We're fucking... I... I blushed. I think I'm okay with this, Danny. I trust you. I know you're not going to hurt me, so... So I'll just take you as you come. We'll see where this goes, right? I know you're not going to hurt me. That's something you're having to reassure yourself of. Just bear that in mind. Danny stared at me in silence for a few seconds, then he stood and crossed to me. Um... He grabbed me once again and pulled me into a kiss. Things were getting heated, very quickly heated. He lifted me up and carried me over to the bed. Okay, Pig, are you sure you're okay with this? God, no! No! It's the people who are controlling me who are. Yes, I'm definitely okay with this, please. He kissed me again and there was no more talking between us that night. Night? No one asked where we went. It's clearly afternoon. The trip back to the hospital... Hospital. <laughs> the hostel was filled with a tired, contented silence. After all the excitement of the trip, it seemed like most people just wanted to get back to their own rooms and relax. But there was also an undercurrent of dissatisfaction. We had been able to stay in a really nice hotel for a few days and have some actual fun, but now we were going back to a slum of a hostel and our old terrible jobs. Still, in the end, this was the experience we had signed up for, even... If we hadn't really known in the beginning how it would all work out, uh, we had no need. We had each other. Oh yeah, well, the support, emotional support we provide each other, is truly groundbreaking among students. In a sense that I may know two people who I wouldn't want to bash their face in if they came knocking in my room asking for help. Maybe we weren't all the best of friends, understatement of the century, but we had learned to get along and work together. It was more than I could say about the members of my university class, either here or back in New York. So we headed back on the bus, hardly speaking, until we finally pulled in and unloaded. Home sweet home, sort of. Honestly, it didn't smell that all sweet after we'd been at the beach for a few days. What? Not everything smells like seawater. You no longer have to get sand in everything. But it was still my home for now. For now. Oh, look at this horrible, horrible place we're back at. I was sitting in the living room, stretching across the couch, trying to get the kinks out of my back, when... Okay, Piggy, I think you're needed in the kitchen. No, bugger off. As he stood in the doorway, a slight smirk on her face, a sense of unease washed over me. Oh, let me guess. I'm going to be blamed for where three or four things have gone missing? I nodded and crossed over, wondering what exactly was going on. It's quiet. I entered the dining area and found James there, frowning over an open laptop. That just sounds like any TV series ever. Presumably made in Japan. I mean, come on, this is like a running dude and then there's montages of him with like swords across his face. It's the kind- oh, and it's in high school, because all Japanese-based things are. Yes, is something wrong? I must admit, I started playing Persona recently. Fucking... I don't know what I was expecting, I've said this a lot, but it was set in a high school. Of course it is. We wear high school uniforms. <laughs> Sit. He gestured to a chair on the other end of the table, and I took it. Okay, Piggy, we know what you did. Perhaps you would like to confess and come forward. If you could return the money, that'd be even better. We could act like nothing happened. What? What are you talking about? If you confess right now, there'll be no need for drastic measures. You could even stay at the hospital and keep your job. Hospital? I gaped like a fish. Finally, I realized something big, really big, must have happened. I'm sorry, but I think there must have been some kind of misunderstanding here. Can you explain what's going on to me? James bristled. No point in doing it diplomatically, is there? Look here, thief. I know you took the money out of a hostel register. What did you do with it? What? I never 
delivered such a thing? Of course you didn't, which makes this video pretty hard to explain, doesn't it? He turned the laptops, so I could see it, a grainy black and white video flickered on the screen and he hit play. It was the hostel entrance way, the reception desk. For a while, nothing happened, then I appeared, fiddling with the, around with the register. I opened the drawer, I stared at, down at it, I looked down, then pulled something out of the drawer, fiddled with it some more and disappeared. I was fixing the register like you asked me to, that's all. Fix the register? I never asked you to fix the register. I stared at him, too confused to know how to respond. Who did ask me how to fix the register? I don't remember. Who asked me how to fix the register? Um... Oh, the game will tell us, probably. Yes, you did. You're always making us fix things. You told me to fix the register because the drawer wasn't closing properly. It wasn't closing properly. There was a little bit of plastic wedged into the back. I had to pull everything out to get it free. In the video, my back was to the camera most of the time, covering up what I was doing. I know you can't really tell, but I swear that's what I was up to. Why would I steal from the hostel? The money that was supposed to be there is gone. How do you explain that? I couldn't even remember if there had been any money in the register when I was messing with it. I wasn't paying attention at the time. I wasn't expecting this. Okay. If we're pissing around a lot, I have to put the money somewhere. I... I presumably didn't have a bag with me. There's not one on my portrait. Surely you could tell as I leave that I haven't got any money on me. I don't know, but it wasn't me. This is your last chance. Return the money and this doesn't have to go any farther. I didn't even know how much money was supposed to be missing. Oh my god, the trip thuns. If they were supposed to be in the register, that was thousands of pounds. I didn't steal anything. I don't have any money. You can search my room if you want to. I swear I didn't do it. I suppose you've already spent it then. I didn't take any money! I never would have expected this from a kid like you. I can't believe this is happening. I'd like to throw you out on your ass, but I've got landlord regulations, and I don't want to have to bring a police inspector around if I can help it. There's probably quite a few code violations in this hostel. He doesn't want anyone to notice. A few? I <laughs> the walls aren't held together properly! So here's what's going to happen. You're fired, for starters. That means no job and no rent deal. Oh, crap. You pay your rent every week and find that missing £120 and you can stay. Otherwise, I'm within my rights to evict you. Straight onto the street if I have to. £120? So it wasn't the trip funds that had vanished. It must have only been in the, one of the drop-in guest payments. Wait, can we make a deal? Too late, you had your chance. Damn it, if I'd only known it was that much, I could have just paid him off to begin with. And then everyone would think I... But then everyone would think I was a thief. Yeah, that's sort of the problem there. I maintain that I'm innocent. I wouldn't do this to you guys or any of my friends. Not after everything that's happened. But my heart pounded. I didn't really have a choice here, did I? It was already re a remarkably easy way out, considering he thought I was some kind of criminal. I, I will do it. I maintain my innocence, but I'll get you your money, I guess. James glared at me from across the table. I don't like you, never have, and now probably never will. I mean... These are hardly words that strike me to my very heart if you're saying that you've never liked me, never have, and now never will. You're probably never going to like me to begin with. Let's be real here. Don't mess this up. If you do, you're out. He spat on the floor. Clean that up, why don't you? He got up and left. I crossed the room, got a washcloth, wet it, and started cleaning the floor, consumed by a feeling of disbelief. This couldn't really be happening. There's no way this was my life. It was a bad dream. It had to be. When I finished cleaning, I threw the washcloth in the sink and left the dining room. I wanted some space, some time to think about what just happened. Surely there was some way to prove my innocence? But when I turned to head upstairs, I saw a large gathering of people on the landing. Okay, Piggy. A handful of herd faces turned to me. How could you do this to us? Oh, good, so they don't... They just think I did it anyway. Is this the bad ending? Haven't we gotten all along this time? I cooked food for you. I trusted you. I thought we were friends. But even you, after this, all this time, maybe there's no one in the world worth trusting. <laughs> Are you really a thief? Damn, shot past me, I'll tell you that. I'm not happy about it, though definitely not, but part of me wants to congratulate you. You fooled everyone. I'd better be more careful with my wallet, huh? How could you betray us all like this after all this time? How could you do this to us? We still haven't replied. Three people have accused us. Separately, and we still haven't said a thing. 
We're family. Don't you understand that? We all stick together and look one one another. Okay, that's definitely not true if you've paid any attention to the past three months, but all right, whatever. Did you steal my volleyball too? I can't believe you. You're despicable. If you weren't a girl, I'd kick your ass. Oh, that's roughly what I was expecting you to say. Nobody should have taken advantage of kindness or friendship. You're some kind of psychopath. I'm just trying to process all of this. I don't know what to make of it. I'm not upset at all, though. I'm just really shocked, okay? Well, frankly, I am just shocked. What a cruel person you are, Ogie Piggle. I can't believe you would do this to your friends. Oh, I wonder who did it. It was either her or Danny. I think you should leave the hostel immediately. I don't feel comfortable with you here, and I'm sure everyone else feels the same. Here I thought I was the troublemaker, and I was completely wrong. Why are you grinning at me? Is this supposed to be a joke? But you can pack your stuff and shove right off. Nobody wants a thief in the house. But, but I swear I'm innocent. My protests sounded pathetic even to my own ears. Everyone hated me. Everyone absolutely hated me. But something felt off. Something was missing. Danny isn't here. It's because he did it. I immediately dashed up the staircase heading for Danny's room and... Ugh, I bounced back from whoever I'd bumped into and fell back towards the staircase. I had reached out to grab and grabbed me, pulling me back onto the hallway. As I regained my balance, I realised what had happened. Danny sat halfway down the staircase, head in his hands. He had saved me by falling himself. Danny, jeez, I'm so sorry. I rushed to his side, placing my hands gently over his head. Did you hit the wall? Don't move. We can have to make sure you're not bruised or bleeding or you might get a concussion. I think he's fine. Danny grabbed hold of my wrists and growled at me. I'm fine. He stood, pulling me up with him. You sure? You sure you're alright? He nodded. I've had worse than this. I don't think it's a concussion, but you're free to accompany me to bed if you're wa all that worried. He smirked at me and I gaped at him. I... Wait, you're not mad at me then? He gave me a throaty laugh. Mad at you? How <laughs> can I be mad at you? I don't care what you did. In fact, if you really did it, it just means we're more similar than I thought we were. Ding! 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 Hang on. Jangle. Jangle any bells you have because alarm bells are ringing. More similar to what I thought we were. Oh, no. But I doubt you did it. You're not the kind of person to cave under pressure, or even financial pressure, if it means hurting someone. It's part of why I like you. You're better than I am. He shrugged nonchalantly. So, so you don't hate me. If you can accept me the way I am, with all that is definitely very, very wrong with me, then I can accept you the way you are, whatever you think is wrong with you. I don't think there is anything wrong with you, but you know, I might be biased. Danny. Tears filled my eyes and I leapt up to hug him. He staggered under my weight. Ow! I pulled away hastily. Sorry. I might not have a concussion, but that doesn't mean I'm not sore. And can we get on some level ground? I don't feel like taking a second spill. Right, sorry. <laughs> Hello, sorry. I am, uh, I'm Brandon. <coughs> sorry, I'm such a cunt. Um, we returned to the top of the hallway where Brandon was emerging from his room with a glass of water. There is no glass of water in his hands. He eyed me as he did so, and Danny wrapped a hand around my waist and pulled me over protectively towards him. You know what, let's just do this. If you have a problem with Oggy Piggy, talk to me about it. I... <laughs> it's hard to take him seriously with this face because he doesn't actually get darker. He just puts eyeliner around his eyes. Hey, hey, I didn't say anything like that. Jeez, what's the matter with you? All on edge today, aren't you, pretty boy? You are not allowed to call him pretty boy. Let's, <laughs> let's be realistic here. Danny shrugged and Brendan continued past us on his way to the kitchen. Well, thank you for everything. Mm, what are you going to do now? I don't really know. All my relief at knowing that Danny was still standing by me immediately dissipated. Even if Danny believed me, no one else did. Was I supposed to convince them otherwise? Was I be able to find a job? Would I be able to stay in the hostel anymore? Would I even be able to stay in the UK? Yes! Why would you be able to stay in the UK? Apparently Danny can fix you up with some burglary job anyway. I can see you could use some time alone. Alone? I frowned. I'd rather stay with you actually. Danny grimaced as if expecting some kind of sharp pain. No, 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 I don't think that's for the best. You should, uh, sort out your thoughts without me affecting you or, uh, distracting you. <laughs> it's because there's 120 quid in this room. Oh, you wouldn't distract me. In that instant, Danny shoved me against the wall and kissed me hungrily, his hands running up and down my body. 
when he finally pulled away, I was flushed and breathless. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. He ran a hand through his hair and nodded. I'll be in my room applying more mascara uh, if you need me, though. Just knock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just knock, will do. With a deep breath, he clasped on my shoulder and then went to into his own bedroom. Damn, distracting indeed. But no matter how wonderful it was that Danny was on my side, I felt despair closing in on me as I crossed the hallway. For now, there was nothing I could do but go to my room. <laughs> Either RC or Danny did this. It would be more fitting if Danny did this. If I'm gonna be honest with you, it would make more sense for me. If Arcee did it, it's just more cheap and petty revenge. I'm 90% sure Danny was the one who told me to go fix the register to begin with. Tell you what, we're gonna find out quickly. I'm gonna save it real quick here. And we're gonna go find out who asked me to fiddle with the register before. See you in a second. <sighs> God fucking damn it. Of course it was. Alright, well, I don't know. See, I am hoping that we will get revenge on her, and it turns out that Arcee and Brendan did it together. And we'll feel vindicated at the end, and everyone will be like, oh, This is a Hanako Games game. It could very well turn out that we don't get said vindication and we're just tossed out. Ah, the scenes from earlier whipped around through my mind. Wasn't it only a few hours ago that we were all on a bus together traveling, traveling happily from the beach? I think we were all knackered and not talking to each other, but sure, we can call it that if you want to. How could my life change so suddenly? The world seemed to be closing in around me. I felt like I was suffocating. There was too much pressure, too much negativity, too much darkness. There was nothing I could do, nothing. All right, bird. I know who did it. Ugh. What was that noise? I squinted into the darkness. A halo of light surrounded my phone. It was going off. No, why now? I'm so tired. I didn't bother to answer, and finally the ringing stopped. I turned over and shut my eyes. The phone rang and rang and rang. It wouldn't stop. I'm amazed with it being this loud that there is no one else. Like woke up from this, or banging the walls. At some point I realised the people in the rooms next to me would get mad if I didn't make it stop, even more mad than they already were. I sighed and grabbed the phone. Hello, who is this? <laughs> Hello, Nene and Jin Su. What do you want? Damn, you don't sound happy to hear from us. Not after we went all through this trouble to set up the call. We're in different time zones, you know. Y you just called me in the morning. <laughs> Like, it's clearly the night, despite it clearly being light outside near the London Eye. Trouble, it's... I squinted at the numbers on my phone. It's 4am here! How is that going through any trouble? That means it's, like, 11pm their time. <laughs> like... How does that make it any better? Ungrateful. Anyway, how are things doing over there? Um, I hesitated, not really knowing what to say. They probably didn't want to hear about my actual problems. Um, how is it going over here? Could be going better. Uh, everyone hates me, which is a slight problem at the moment, but it's fine because my murderous weird boyfriend is standing up for me. 